right. So today we're going to cover a lot about a linear accelerator and part of the devices you need to know are obviously linear accelerators. And unfortunately, there are so many components that are important. You have to really be able to pick and choose which ones you spend a majority of your time on and which ones you really dive into the physics of. So that includes things like accelerator tubes and klystrons. So here is a list of some of those that I wouldn't necessarily spend a ton of time for, not saying you don't need to. I obviously do not exactly know, but things that you would need to know in case you, they ask a brief overview of some of the devices and components of a LINAC. And then obviously it's going to depend on how much time you have to study, where are you in your studying plan. And part of the real test of this exam is figuring out where you prioritize things and how much you study for each one. That's what makes it very difficult. So first describe the use of a waveguide. What is a circulator? Why do we need a vacuum and where does it start and stop? What is the thyrotron? How is the pulse forming network used? Why is sulfur hexafluoride important to a LINAC? What is the duty cycle and size of pulse coming from the electron gun? It's a mouthful. So to begin, the use of the waveguide. So this confines the microwaves by reflecting them off the walls, kind of like water in a hose that is flowing through it. So it's pressurized with Freon or SF6, which prevents electrical breakdown. So now circulator. So now in the waveguide, there, the circulator acts as a one-way sign, essentially, where microwave power goes from the klystron to the accelerator tube, but can't be reflected back to the klystron where it would cause some major damage. So now, why do we need a vacuum, and where does it stop and start? So the electrons would collide and deflect with air, and the electron gun would ultimately burn out, and this is maintained by the ion pump. So the klystron is under the vacuum, as is the electron gun assembly, as well as the accelerator waveguide, bending magnet, and target head, which kind of uses a beryllium window allowing beam access into the beam shaping head. So all of those are under the vacuum. And again, it's important because otherwise your electron gun would burn out and you would not receive any type of beam. So now what is the thyrotron? So a thyrotron is essentially an on and off switch filled with hydrogen. It sits after the pulse forming network and controls the timing of pulses. So now how is this pulse forming network I just mentioned, how is it used? So it steps up voltage from the thyrotron. The pulses are sent to RF driver and are three gigahertz uh, total. So now, Again, it mainly stores electrical energy, releases it in those square pulses, and sends a DC flat, a topped voltage, again, to the, the thyrotron, things of that nature, or receives it from it. So that's pulse-forming network. Now, why is sulfur hexafluoride, where, how's it come in, and why is it important to a LINAC? And so this is used when waveguides transport amplified microwave power to the accelerator waveguide for injection. It prevents electrical arcing that would ultimately destroy the microwave waveguide structure. So the duty cycle of a linear accelerator, that is, I finally get to write something, yay. It's, uh, sorry, this is a lot of talking, but there's no way I can write all those things while making this a quick video. So is a 0.1% or a, a one millisecond pulse. So essentially what we're looking at is, what would that be? One over 1,000 second pulse. Now, what is the size of the pulse coming from the electron gun? That is, uh, first of all, we are going to have a four microsecond duration. And the pulse is going to be 50 kV, or I guess KEV. So 
that is a rundown of all these quick, quick question and answers about linear accelerators or components. I know there's a lot there, but you really have to be able in this exam, there's so much information, prioritize what is important and what isn't. Are the examiners really going to ask a question about a circulator? Do you need to know every ins and outs and all the physics of a circulator? With your time period that you have to study and all the other things they need to expect of you, personally, I would say no. I would not spend much more time than what I just told you about circulator. Obviously, those are things you as the examinee have to kind of decide for yourself. But if you want my opinion or have any other questions, please comment below. I'd love to help where I can. And if you have any questions, like I said, comment below. I uh, hope you're enjoying the videos. Best of luck studying. And you got this.